We'll open Micromodeler DSP and select a digital filter from the toolbar at the top and drag it to our application. We'll choose a moving average filter because it's one of the simplest types of filters. After you drop the filter, the displays will be updated automatically. A moving average filter simply stores a history of the last n samples and outputs their average. At the top right, we see the graph of magnitude versus frequency, or how much different frequencies will be amplified or reduced by the filter. We can see that averaging filters a signal, retaining the low frequencies, and reducing the high frequencies. We can control the number of previous samples that it averages by adjusting the filter length n. By adjusting this, we can see that we have some basic control over which frequencies can pass and which are discarded. If we look at the structure view, we can see what the inside of a moving average filter might look like. The z to the minus 1 symbols mean delay by one time step, and the plus symbols mean add or combine the signals. The white arrows mean multiply the signal by the amount shown to the right of the arrow. The chain of delays is called a delay line, with the input signal being delayed by one additional time step as you proceed. For an average of five samples, we take one-fifth of the most recent sample, one-fifth of the second most recent sample, and so on. The white arrows are also called taps, so you could almost imagine them as being taps like the one in your kitchen sink that are all one-fifth open. You can imagine the signal flowing, flowing in from the left and being progressively delayed as it moves along the delay line, then being recombined in different strengths through the taps to form the output. If you can understand this, then you can get an idea what an FIR filter is. An FIR filter is identical to the moving average filter, but instead of all the tap strengths being the same, they can be different. The next section will introduce you to finite impulse response, or FIR, filters. By varying the tap strengths, we can create close to any frequency response that we want.